So let me ask you a question. If we didn't have Santa, suppose it's just Jesus, would we have any joy? So think about that. Take Santa away, and let's just talk about Jesus this morning. Do you have any joy? Do you think Jesus would be popular this morning amongst the groups here in our... Do you think he'd be okay on the Rotary Club or Kiwanis? Would he be amongst the rich and the famous in our city? What would Jesus be like? Would, would he bring great joy? Man, can you imagine? Think about this. I know Jesus brings joy. There's no doubt about it. Think about this for a moment. You're a man in a bed, been in a bed for 25 years in a car accident, and you're paralyzed, and you can't move. And this Jesus comes in. Now think about it. And Jesus comes into your house, and they say, Jesus, are you the great healer? He says, I'm a Messiah. I'm the Holy One. I can heal people. He comes in. He lays hands on you. He lays hands on you. And all of a sudden, your legs start tingling. And you can move. And you get out of the bed. And you're walking. And you're standing and you're walking around. Do you think that Jesus says, well, I'll see you later. Nice to see you. And walks away. I think Jesus is going, wow, man, you're taller than I thought you was. Cool. Let me let, shake your hand. Good grip. And, I, and, and you would say, oh, Jesus, God, I can't believe. Can, how far can I walk? Well, just walk as far as you want. You're okay. Can you imagine the joy when he runs to the front and says, mom, dad, look, I can walk. Do you think they go, well, that's nice. They go, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Great joy. They have great joy. Can you imagine what it would be like when Jairus' little daughter was dead and Jesus came into the bedroom and they had already called the morticians to come pick her up? Can you imagine when he goes in there and he lays hands on this little child, says, come here, baby, and lays in. And all of a sudden, her little eyes open up, his twinkling little eyes open up, and she begins to take a breath and her lips turn pink again. And can you imagine? Do you think Jesus is okay? Your mom and dad will be here in a moment. I bet you Jesus. Come here, baby. I, I can see Jesus swinging around like you do your grandkids in the backyard. Whoa, she's alive, man. Thank God that I'm able to heal people and bring them back to life. Can you imagine what it would have been like for the mom and dad to say, oh, she's alive, she's not dead. Call the funeral home. Tell them to come get her. Can you think they were all sitting around really quiet? and saying, well, we're so glad. Thank you, Jesus. We'll call you the next time somebody dies. No, there must have been a great joy. Can you imagine the day that they had, that, that they had all the fish and loaves? Can you imagine all that food that morning? I mean, these people are starving to death on these hillsides, and they're hungry, and they start multiplying all the food. Oh, my God, I can see them having a food fight right now. Hey, man, check this loaf of bread out. I mean, can you just imagine the joy of people? It's got to be incredible. And we forget about the joy of Jesus in this season. In this time, you've got to have joy in your heart. Think of it. We got, we got good news. We got good news. Jesus is coming again. We got great news. He's on the way. And sometimes we look at Christmas as a memorial service. Christmas is not a memorial service. Christmas is a celebration service. Because when my dad says, I'm coming home, I was a little boy, said, I'm coming home, Mike. Be there in a few minutes. I got all the food. I was so excited, we waiting on the front porch, waiting on him, because I knew he was coming. The anticipation of knowing that someone's coming, and we should be anticipating the coming of baby Jesus. Not a baby anymore, but the anticipation that he's coming back in all of his glory. And this is what's so good. How can you not have joy at a time like this? Oh, Lord of mercy, help me, Jesus. Think about this. And the time, of the, I want this to be relevant, I told you. What does this mean to you? How can you apply this to your life? Think about the things you've lost, your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, a schoolmate, a friend, someone that you love, someone that you're separated from them. And, and think about maybe you've gone through a bankruptcy, you've lost a home, you've lost something. Think about all this stuff. And think, how can I have joy in this season of my life? Let me tell you, it's like this. When you know that Jesus has already come, and you believe that, and you can endure all these sufferings and all these challenges right now, by your faith in Christ. I stand here today. My dad died 18 years ago. On December the 12th, my father passed away. And I have great joy today. I have great joy because I know that he is alive. I know that he is with my God. And think about if I can have this amount of joy right here, by faith only, blind faith, I don't see dad. I haven't seen God. Uh, I have the Bible that tells me a promise was made made that those who believe in him have eternal life will never be separated from him and i have this much joy i can only i can't even imagine begin to think how much joy my father has now when he is with the savior right now in heaven on gold streets so who has the most joy so think about it so they are joyful 
And we should be joyful. I can see those of you who lost loved ones, you say, you know, I don't want to celebrate. I don't want to get past this. It's hard. I lost my mom two years ago. Christmas tree, ooh, it makes me sad. I cry. I can't stand it. Listen, mama would say to you, go get two Christmas trees. Mama would say to you, cook a big turkey and flip it around the kitchen and all those things. To have great joy because I'm coming back with a man that you believe in. So how can you not have great joy when you know the story? And we know that this is not the end of life. This is the beginning of life for all of us. This is a great season and a great time. And I want you to have great joy. The Bible says rejoice in all things and give thanks. Rejoice and have joy in all things and give thanks. Because the character of God is joy. God is the happiest person in the universe. But his heart will be full of the most joy. When we're all together, we've all accepted him as our Lord and our master. And then he'll have complete joy. The Christian spirit moves a little slow on me, guys. Every year as I get older. But you know, when you come to church and you fellowship with the Christians and you start talking about this Bible and about this message, and when you light the tree in a new way, say, I'm lighting this tree, might be the last year because Jesus might be here next year this time. That new joy, and I know that those who are with him are not dead people. They are people that are with him under his guardianship, love, and care, and they're going to come back one day, and we're all going to be together. Now, how can you not be, how can you be sad about that? So have great joy in this season. Amen? Amen. Let us come to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we pray that the light of joy will give us courage. We pray, Lord, also that you'll let the light of joy Give you courage, Lord. This message of the angel of the shepherds, be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news, for great joy will come to all the people. Lord, help us to get that in this season. And Lord, for those of us in this sanctuary this morning that might be struggling with so much joy, some of us might, Lord, be struggling that other people have joy and we don't. Lord, help us to understand that to have total joy is to submit to your love and to the offer that you make and the great gift of Jesus. And we have our joy because of Christ. For without him, we have no eternal life. And one day we'll all stand before you without choice. We don't have a choice. We'll all have to stand before you because we can't control our lives. Our lives, we die every day. We have no control over life. We will die. But Lord... That doesn't change the fact that one day we'll stand before you on that great day. And on that great day, there'll be no sunrise and no sunset, just you and us standing before you. But Lord, thank God, because of what Jesus has done, we won't have to be in the judgment line. No, 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 no. We'll be in the reception line <laughs> with great joy because of what you've done. So, Lord, this morning, may anyone in this sanctuary who's not received you as the master, who's not let you come into their heart as their is their Lord and Savior who's not been born again through the message. We pray that ask you into the heart now that you would become their attorney. You become their best friend. You become their psychologist. You would be their preacher and their great physician. So Lord, you come through the Advent season. You say you continue to come. Keep coming to us, God, and change our hearts, oh God. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you great praise. And the church said, Amen and amen.